What is going on everybody? It's Medicosis Perfectionitis. Welcome back to my statistics playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the measures of central tendency, such as the mean, the median, and the mode. We talked about the measures of spread or the measures of dispersion, including the range, the interquartile range, the standard deviation, the variance, the z-score, and more. We discussed sensitivity and specificity, positive predictive value and negative predictive value, positive likelihood ratio and negative likelihood ratio, incidence versus prevalence, consistency versus validity. And in the last video, we talked about the absolute risk reduction. Today, we shall talk about the multiplicative inverse of the absolute risk reduction, which is known as the number needed to treat, which means how many people need to be treated in order for one of them to benefit. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my statistics playlist. Please watch these videos in order to increase the probability of understanding. I have another video titled Biostatistics as well. You need to watch the previous video titled Absolute Risk Reduction before this one. In that last video, I've told you the story of the WHO announcing that 50 gram of processed meat per day increase the risk of colorectal cancer by 18 percent unfortunately as you might predict most newspapers and news media made two big mistakes mistake number one is not understanding what group one carcinogen even means it means that we're confident that this thing is a carcinogen but it tells you nothing about the magnitude of the risk meat is not in the same category as cigarettes they are not even close one has a greater magnitude of risk compared to the other. The second mistake that the news media fell for is confusing absolute risk with relative risk. If this 18% rise was an absolute risk increase, then of course you should be concerned. But this is not an absolute risk increase. This was a relative risk increase. And that's why you should not worry so much. And to belabor the point, because it's worth belaboring, let's draw 100 persons. Here are 100 persons that never eat processed meat. And let's say that we expect six cases of colorectal cancer out of these 100 individuals. Now let's take 100 persons that are regular eaters of processed meat. We will expect seven cases of colorectal cancer in these 100 persons. One is about 18% of six, and that's where the 18% relative risk increase came from. But how can we express this in absolute terms? We only see one extra case of colorectal cancer in processed meat eaters. So the absolute risk increase or the attributable risk is only 1%. So if we take a look at the 6 out of 100 persons who never eat meat and we multiply this by 18%, we get one extra person per 100 who's going to develop cancer that can be contributed to consumption of processed meat. And then you get 6 out of 100, you add to that 1 in 100, which is the one extra person, and you get 7 out of 100, and this represents 7 cases per 100 in the individuals that eat processed meat. So how did the WHO arrive at the 18% number? Easy. Anytime you see the word relative, it implies division. So we're going to divide. We're going to divide lots of things indeed. On top, we'll put this ratio, which is one extra person per 100. Let's put 1.08 per 100. This is the extra risk added by consuming processed meat. And then in the denominator, we're going to put 6 divided by 100. And this is the number of people who got colorectal cancer out of the 100 that do not eat processed meat. Then let's cancel 100 with 100. Then divide 1.08 by 6. And this will give you 0 0.18, which ironically enough is the same as 18%. And this is where we get the 18% number from. Easy peasy. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. 
If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. So we started with 6 out of 100. Add to that 18%, you end up with 7 in 100 because the 18% is a relative risk increase. The 18% is called the relative risk, but the 1% is absolute risk. This is the 1% and this is the 18%. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, drop your favorite food emoji in the comments. So in statistics, when we talk about absolute risk difference, by the way, difference could mean something increasing or decreasing, going from low to high or from high to low. The absolute risk difference could be an absolute risk increase or an absolute risk decrease or reduction. If I'm being exposed to a bad thing, for example, cigarette smoking, asbestos exposure, lead poisoning, arsenic poisoning, etc., the absolute risk will be increasing. But if I'm being exposed to a good thing, for example, adding a seat belt to my car, prophylactic therapy, vaccines, etc., we expect absolute risk reduction, at least on paper. So when the news media wants to scare the living lights out of you, they report the bigger number because it looks scarier and they ignore this number. When pharmaceutical companies want to prove to you that their drugs work, they report the bigger number because it shows a greater improvement i.e. our medication reduce the risk of clots by 18%. Oh yeah, but this is in relative terms, not in absolute terms. Conversely, if a company is trying to argue in a court of law in front of the judge or the jury that their compound did not cause a certain injury, they're going to report the smaller number and label the bigger number as misinformation and disinformation. And that's why you should never forget that there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damned lies, and goddamn statistics. So in order not to be manipulated by the news media or by corporations, ask for all the raw numbers and all the ratios. Relative risk reduction and absolute risk reduction before the specific intervention or exposure and the numbers after the intervention or the exposure. Trust nobody, cause most people suck. Some mathematical pearls for the pros. Reduction implies subtraction. So when I say a risk reduction, it means that we're going to subtract. When I say the word relative, it implies division. When I say rate, it also implies division. And in physics, the word rate implies division by time. So speed is the rate of change in distance and velocity is the rate of change, see I'm dividing by time, of displacement and acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So absolute risk reduction is the difference between the risk in the unexposed group or the control group and the absolute risk in the exposed group or the treatment group. Or you can say the event rate in the control group minus the event rate in the treatment group. And if you flip the absolute risk reduction, you will have the number needed to treat. So let's calculate the absolute risk reduction for this example. I'm sorry, I should not call it absolute risk reduction. I should call it absolute risk increase or simply attributable risk. It's always the bigger number minus the smaller number. The bigger ratio minus the smaller ratio. The bigger ratio here is 7 out of 100. So 7.08 divided by 100 minus the smaller number, which is 6 in 100. This will give me an attributable risk or an absolute risk increase of 1.08 divided by 100, which is 1.08%. You know, if you take this attributable risk and flip it, what you're going to get, you're going to get something called the number needed to harm, not the number needed to treat, because this carcinogenic is not a good thing, it's a bad thing. It's the number needed to harm, which equals 1 over the attributable risk. So you simply take this ratio of the attributable risk and flip it. So instead of 1 over 100, it becomes 100 over 1 or 100 over 1.08. And this equals 92.59. Let's call it 93 approximately. What does that mean? It means that 93 persons have to consume processed meat regularly in order for one out of these 93 people 
to develop colorectal cancer. This is the event rate in the exposed group and this is the event rate in the control group. What is the event rate you might ask? The event rate is the number of events in a certain group divided by the total number of subjects in that group. So there is an event rate for the control group and an event rate for the treatment group. Again, there is good exposure and bad exposure. Good exposure like installing seat belts, vaccinations, etc. Bad exposure or risk factors is exposure to cigarettes, asbestos, lead, arsenic, etc. You always want to start with the big number and then minus the smaller number. In absolute risk reduction, the bigger number is the event rate in the control group that was not exposed to the good thing. Minus the lower number, which is the event rate in the treatment group. It is lower because they have been treated. So the risk has been reduced. But with attributable risk, it's the opposite. The event rate in the exposed group is greater. Of course, people who smoke more cigarettes will have more lung cancer. And people who do not smoke cigarettes will have less lung cancer. Flip the absolute risk reduction and you get number needed to treat. Flip the attributable risk and you get the number needed to harm. Let's practice what we preach. Here is case number one. Please pause the video and try to solve this yourself. Now pause. Of all the people that took placebo, 9% developed influenza. Okay, that's the bigger number. We start here. And only 3% contracted the disease out of those who were vaccinated. That's the smaller number. You put that here. And this is a reduction in risk thanks to the vaccination. We're going to call this absolute risk reduction. And when I say the word reduction, it implies subtraction. 9% minus 3% equals 6% or 0 0.06. If you want the number needed to treat, you simply need to flip the absolute risk reduction. So it's 1 over ARR or 1 over 0 0.06 and this equals 16.67 which is about 17 so the correct answer is choice D. And here's the same answer in more color. Pause and review. You can do the subtraction like this, or you can say 9 out of 100 minus 3 in 100 equals 6 in 100, or 0.06. And then you flip the 6 out of 100 into 100 divided by 6, which is going to give you 17. Case number 2. Please pause. First, you find the absolute risk reduction, and then you flip it to get the number needed to treat. Big ratio minus small ratio. And since this is a vaccine, i.e. a good exposure, the bigger number will be the people who were not vaccinated. So the denominator is 100, and we got 12 cases. The people who got vaccinated, the denominator is 100, only 2 got the measles. And this gives us 10 out of 100, which can be simplified into 1 in 10. And then the number needed to treat simply means that you flip the absolute risk reduction. So instead of 1 over 10, it becomes 10 over 1 or simply 10. So the correct answer is G. And here's the same answer in more color. Pause and review. Here is question number 3. Pause. We need to find the absolute risk reduction first. So it's a bigger ratio minus a smaller ratio. The bigger ratio will always be the people who did not receive the treatment, meaning the second group that got the placebo. So the total number of people was 2,800. Out of these, how many got cardiovascular disease? That will be 700. Put this in the numerator and then subtract. Put 3,000 in the denominator as you see here and 600 upstairs. And then you cancel two zeros upstairs with two zeros downstairs, two zeros upstairs with two zeros downstairs. Seven divided by 28 is one in four. 6 by 30 is 1 in 5. 1 in 4 is 25% or 0 0.25. 1 in 5 is 20% or 0 0.20, which is going to give me 0 0.05 or 5%. 5% means 5 in 100, just like that, which can be simplified into 1 over 20. And therefore, if you want the number needed to treat, you simply need to flip the absolute risk reduction. So it becomes 1 over 1 over 20 or simply 20. Out of every 20 people who get treated using Velsar 10, only one is going to benefit. And by benefit, I mean not die from a cardiovascular condition. There is another method that you can use to calculate the absolute risk reduction, which is the 2 by 2 table that has A, B, C, and D. And then we said that we have yes versus no, exposed versus unexposed. 
and I've taught you how to use this second method in my previous video on absolute risk reduction, which you can find in this biostatistics playlist. Here's the same answer in more color. Pause and review. This was the homework of the previous video. I've promised you to give you the answer in this video. Please pause the video and try to answer this yourself. What's the first thing that should be done? The answer is reorganization of this table to look as follows. You always want disease versus no disease to be here on top. Disease versus no disease. Exposed versus not exposed. Now let's go. Disease versus no disease. Exposed versus not exposed. And then you write A here, B here, not here. That's the biggest mistake. A here, B here, then C followed by D. Let's start. People who had strokes and received the drug, which is aspirin. That will be 40. So you're going to write this number here. Then people who have the disease which is stroke and did not receive the aspirin, i.e. receive placebo. Placebo and stroke is 200 persons. Put that here. No stroke and received aspirin. Put that here and that will be 760. Write this down. And then no stroke and did not receive aspirin. So receive placebo. Placebo and no strokes is 1800. Put this down here. Then take a moment to find the total for the exposed and the total for the unexposed. The total of the people that took aspirin is 40 plus 760. This will be 800. Put that here. The total of people who did not receive aspirin is 200 plus 1800 or 2000. Write this here. And then what? If you want the absolute risk reduction, follow the following formula. It's C over C plus D because that's the bigger ratio minus A over A plus B for that's the smaller ratio. What is C? C is 200, you write this here, divide by C plus D. C is 200, D is 1800, C plus D, I already have the number, which is 2000. That's why I tally up the total before I go to town. And then you subtract, so minus, and then what? A is 40, you put this up here, divided by A plus B. 40 plus 760 is 800, smash this down there. And then cancel zeros with zeros and zero with zero. 2 divided by 20 is like 1 in 10 minus 4 out of 80 is 1 in 20. Let's find the common denominator. So it's 2 divided by 20 minus 1 over 20, which equals 1 over 20. 1 over 20 is 0.05 or 5%. That's the absolute risk reduction. Number needed to treat is the inverse of the absolute risk reduction. This equals 1 divided by 1 over 20, which is going to give us 20. So the moral of the story is do not take the table that they gave you at face value and go A, B, C, D like this. Make sure the table is not flipped. This has to be disease, not placebo, and no disease. And this has to be exposure to aspirin, no exposure to aspirin. Professors are not your friends. They are there to use you and confuse you. So make your own table. And here's the same answer in more color. Pause and review. How can we define the number needed to treat? It's the number of people that need to be treated with a certain treatment in order for one of them to benefit. We'll continue in the next video. Check out my statistics playlist and my biostatistics playlist. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 750 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.